What's going on, Clutch Squat? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dub. It's your boy Ross. And we in the Clutch, baby. Hey. Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, with another video today. You feel me? All right, we're going to check out the 20 strangest places where people actually lived, man. This shit, uh, well, actually live. So this hey, is going to be very interesting, man. I'm hey, very man. intrigued to see where, where people uh, set up shop. Where we seen an island where you can walk across it in two minutes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. And it's heavily populated. Where you we seen that uh, the people living at that high-ass altitude. We are. Uh, uh, by the mines or whatever mm -hmm. like yeah bro this this maybe those uh places end up on this list we're gonna check this out it's 28 minutes so y'all sit back relax we're gonna have a uh a good session here get you some teddy grams <laughs> not the teddy grams we're not let go yeah, let's do no, it <laughs> when we think of the word home we probably all think the same thing wait a typical little house with was it was the ground shaking go back the ground was that. shaking, bro. Mm -hmm. Was it was I tripping? When we Look. think of the word home, we probably all think the same thing. Whoa. Oh, that's the camera. A typical little house with a few bedrooms. But for some people, their homes they truly casually defy all there. understanding of what a home can and know. should be. These are the 20 strangest places where people actually live. What a creepy uh Number 20. Hanging Temple of Heng Shan. The Hanging Temple is one of the most popular tourist attractions of the area around Datong in Shanxi Province, China. And this is certainly a place that is unusual, even oh, if no. it isn't technically oh. found in the woods. The 1,500-year-old temple has been constructed 246 feet above the oh. ground, which presumably adds a sense of excitement to the daily ritual of worship in this place, or it would if Hell that no. was what it was really all about anymore. These days, the temple is a site of historic significance, but it's also primarily a tourism hotspot on the account of the weird idea of a building just hanging off the side of a cliff. The temple itself is the only existing place in all of China which has a combination of three of Who the Chinese that? traditional philosophies, those being Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. Although it looks as though it just hangs there, the structure is fixed to the cliff with huge oak beams that are attached in holes that have been chiseled into the rock. So it's probably kind of safe. Even so, I wouldn't practice slide. your jumping up and down while visiting. It's been there for for one and a half millennia, after all. Damn. Oh, bro, if your ass is too big, you can't go. Bro, like, all it takes is one one <laughs> landslide or just somebody how yelling. Much you, how much you weigh? Mm -mm. Stay your nah, ass you, down there. Nah, you can't go up here, bro. They small oh. over there anyway, so. Yeah, if you don't get your fat ass out of here, <laughs> you bring this whole... Damn imagine the people. Down. Imagine the people that be getting mad about fat shaming on planes and stuff. Oh nah, yeah. Go whatever. Right here. <laughs> whatever. They were like, "Hey man, we don't give a fuck. Get your ass out of here." Somebody Lose said, some "Clutch first. City, stay home." <laughs> I'm done. Before we go on, like this video, <laughs> smash the subscribe button, and click the notification <laughs> bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Oh brother. Oh, no, better like it, Ross. Hurry up. Now Smash it's time for the sweet topic. Let's chat about Magingo Island. This right. place is like no other. It's one of the That's strangest the places the anyone's seen. ever seen. So strange, in fact, I that we so. can't believe people actually live there, but they do. As you can see, this tiny little rocky outcrop is covered in shanty oh, town style oh, metal yeah, shacks, it? and it's got a very unique vibe, unlike anything anyone's ever seen before. Would you live here? As always, let us know your. I think that may be a different island. That look. Was that the same place, y'all? I don't remember the name of it. He yeah, said Magingo that... or something like that. Yeah, that may be a different island. It was it's in the comment bro. section down below using the hashtag Sweet That's Topic. That's what he said, right? Number 19. Chong Kanea's Floating Village. <laughs> Located in Cambodia in the Siam Reap region, there's the largest freshwater lake in all of Southeast Asia, the Tonal Sap Lake. This place is not only home to a whole heap of fish, but it's also a place that many people call home. 
and not wow. just around the outside Damn. of it like you might imagine. In fact, and this is a tiny bit crazy sounding, there are apparently over one million people living on this lake, the majority of whom How? live in houseboats on the surface of the water. The reason for this really comes down to the lake itself. It's such a rich source of fish, with over 200 different species living in there, the lake is actually one of the richest fishing grounds in all of the world. That look kind of wow. loud, though. I ain't gonna hold you. There are actually many different smaller pockets of inhabited areas on the lake. These are then essentially easily recognizable as separate villages. One such village is called Chonkanias, and it's home to some 1,000 families who live and work on Ew. the lake. The trouble is that these people are exploited by the tourist industry that seems to send tours to stare at them and has some distinctly wow. unethical practices. These tours do not really show any consideration or indeed engage in any beneficial interaction for the local communities, despite the fact that they're cashing in on their way of life. But yes, mm -hmm. people do actually live here. That much is true. That's crazy. Number 18. Can't rob the nobody coldest there. city in the world. Yakuts is officially the coldest city on Earth. Yakuts. Temperatures in this Siberian province of Russia regularly drop below minus 44 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's nah, a bro. regular day and it's minus no, 44 sir. on a regular casual day, I'm good, bro. I'm great. I'm great. I'm straight. Nah, I'm good, bro. It's That's just not for me. It's not humane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for me. I'm good, bro. Fahrenheit. That's just a little bit chilly. That might seem oh, like the weird. weather's cold it's enough, but it's you true. may be amazed to hear that it can actually get even colder than that. The record-breaking lowest temperature ever recorded here was a minus 83.9 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. And that crazy number would be observed back in February of 1987. How Damn. do people even function in those kinds of temperatures? It seems as though a big coat is probably not going to be quite sufficient enough to keep out the nope. chill. Located about 280 miles to the south of the Arctic Circle, this place is home to around 300,000 people, and during the summer months, they get along just fine. But when the cold comes and sets in, well, that's when life gets really difficult indeed. Such things that we might take for granted cease to be possible in a place like this during the winter time wearing spectacles is suddenly completely impossible they would simply freeze to your oh face my God. driving well that's another tricky issue cars have to run constantly for 24 hours a day yeah, and it ain't seven worth it, days bro. a week because if they stop there's no way on earth you're going to get them started again until the weather improves and if you want to buy milk well then it comes as solid as a frozen block when you add to these basic difficulties the fact that in the winter it's only daytime for about four hours a day and then in summer it stays light for 21 hours a day that's when things get easy bro that's that is torture bro you the the sun is out there for 21 hours oh that is wild bro and when it's cold it's only out for four Oh. It's like a, it's like a whole prison. Like you don't know what time it is, and nah, the bro. difference between day and night. That is crazy. I don't know how they do it. Even more confusing. This place no is on, just man. really, really strange. Super strange. <laughs> Number seventeen, Uber Padi. There are a whole Uber. lot of crazy things in the middle of the Australian outback. Uh -oh. You know, stuff that can kill you, stuff that nobody's seen for hundreds of years, and stretches of scorched earth that go on for miles and miles oh, yeah. where nothing much lives except the occasional snake. But right there, in the middle of that desert, there's also a mining town where people literally live underground. Cooper Padi is an opal mine in the South what? Australian desert, and it's located an eight hours drive from either Adelaide in the south or Alice Springs to the north. The town of Cooper Padi is off the grid and more or less completely hidden underground. Many of the town's inhabitants live in dugouts, which are cave-like dwellings in which they're able to protect themselves from the utterly freezing and the intensely scorching seasons. 
There's little else in between in the Australian desert, but these underground homes are still extraordinary places to live. They may be hewn from the rock, but they're full with the lives and personalities That's of crazy, those who call bro. Cooper Pedy home. The people that live here are forced by sheer necessity to carve out a different way of life. They must be resourceful and adept and big problem solvers as they continue to exist right. in this, one of the harshest places to squeeze out an existence. That's crazy. Number 16. That is wild, Hallstatt, bro. China. Although Hallstatt is one of Austria's most picturesque villages, Small this people. particular Hallstatt is actually to be found in China. That's right, it's actually an exact replica of the ancient European village which has been completely reconstructed in China's Guangdong province. This is Guangdong. completely bizarre, but it does take all sorts now, doesn't it? So how exactly does an obscure Austrian town find itself being recreated? created on the other side of yeah, the planet. Kind of well, weird. actually, China has a little bit of a habit of doing this kind of thing. There are some architects and town planning people in China who seem to have a bit of a penchant for recreating famous and also not so famous landmarks in different locations across the country. There are, in fact, full- They ain't recreating the hoods in America. I right, I bet you they not. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't recreating New Orleans. They ain't doing that. They're recreating these nice white populated places. <laughs> they right. They ain't recreating the hood. I can tell you that now. No, they know what to recreate. Chinese in the clutch. <laughs> Chinese. They so want scale they replicas of such famous <laughs> sites as the Sphinx and the Eiffel Tower, all the way through to the Venetian canals and apparently Austrian villages as well. That's why. The UNESCO World Heritage Site of Hallstatt in Austria has been standing in its original location for hundreds of years. You know, looking like a fairy tale land as many places in Europe are wont to do. However, this replica in China has only been around since 2012. Despite that, though, it does somehow seem imbued with a sense of history nonetheless, <laughs> even if it is a bit discombobulating to suddenly find yourself up an Austrian mountain yes. right in the heart of China. Yeah. And yes, people do actually live here. The idea was to sell the properties in this new Hallstatt to wealthy Chinese people who were unable to get a hold of property in the original Austrian town. But what do you think about all of this strangeness? What famous yes. places would you like to see recreated in your town? Let's have a natter about such nonsense in the comments down below, shall we? Number 15. I'm good. Seteno de las Bodegas. Bodegas. Located Bodegas. in the southern Spanish region oh, of Andalusia, Sentinel Top de las Bodegas other. is a beautiful and What in the Assassin's Creed is going right, on here? Bro. I like it, dog. We about to we hopped into the animus. Let's go. <laughs> no, I'm talking about they are on top of each other, man. I'm I'm here for it. Let's go. One man. fire, Unique place. bro. We're this all is going one of down. the towns that's known as a white <laughs> village or Pueblo like Blanco. It's obviously being that assassin's Wong. All right, bro. All right, man. The Come Wong on. lives on. <laughs> on the account of the fact that the buildings in the village are indeed all painted white. The uniformity of these places is one of their charms, like of dominoes. course, but this particular <laughs> village, although painted white like the Wong others, is also rather different. Many of the houses in this pueblo mm. have been built into the sides of the rock cliff, yeah, meaning crazy. that they're protected from very hot sun by the overhang of the cliff, which creates a kind of shaded terrace in front of many of the buildings. That's a lot of trust, the temperature bro. inside of yeah. the rock is also a much more regulated heat, rather than being at the mercy of the baking sun in this part of Spain. People do indeed live in these houses, but it's such an attractive place for tourists that it's perhaps no longer able to offer what you might call a truly authentic experience, whatever that might be. But it is certainly beautiful nonetheless. Number 14. The Tunnels of Bucharest. Uh oh. Okay. In Bucharest, the capital city of Romania, hundreds of people live in the sewers. 
Oh. There's estimated to be about 1,100 children living in this underground world. However, what? I don't think there's any Ninja Turtles. After the fall of the that. Soviet Union, the country's <laughs> orphanages would suddenly Damn, close, bro, and that no left space. an entire generation of children with no homes and nowhere to go. Oh, they they fled underground when they were left on the streets. That was many years ago, and ever since then, many more children have found a home in the tunnels beneath the city. So they just These people the live in the just... sewers because they have no place else oh, to go. Man. Many of them are drug addicts and have no other options. There's very little help for the desperate people who live in these dreadful oh. conditions. One charity helps to provide basic medical care, but the government, well, they offer nothing to these Damn. lost and forgotten people. Damn. Number 13. Freedom Cove. So them, like, as long as they ain't this on the unique streets. place can be found yep. floating off the coast of Tofino in British Columbia. It's a forested oh, wow. patch of eco land equipped with greenhouses, small buildings, and all the whimsical off-grid contraptions that you could ever imagine. This is Freedom Cove, a homestead project that was created by artists Catherine King and Wayne Adams. They've been building and developing the place ever since way back in Ew. 1992, and it does include all of the essentials, you know, like an art gallery and a dance floor. Oh, and a lighthouse, as well as greenhouses, solar power panels, and a generator. It's a teal and fuchsia floating paradise, or at least it appears that way, but living off grid and a 45 minute boat trip from the nearest town, well, that's not exactly for the faint hearted. This can be a tough life, requiring an awful lot of work to keep it going. But yeah, cause they gotta plant their yeah, own Yeah, you gotta do all your own like shit, that? bro. Ooh, damn. That's, hey, that's tough though. They was able to kind of put that together though. But yeah, they self sufficient. So for the most part, kind of live though. But yeah, the couple they be ready do if believe it, that a lot of satisfaction goes down. And peace may be found in living this way. Number twelve, Ella Day Island. This may be one of the most remote looking houses that we've seen on our list so far, what? and it's on Iceland's Ella Day Island a place that's so odd in appearance that oh, it looks one like house? they have fallen straight out of the pages of a storybook. And the house is perched right there wow. in the center of this weird green slice of an island. There have been many rumors and stories about this spooky looking place over the years, but the truth right. is really not so interesting at all. This island was once considered the premium spot for people who enjoyed puffin hunting, which sounds awful, I know, but it is a thing that some people do seem to enjoy. Anyways, the house is not the secret pad of a millionaire, nor is it the hideaway of a religious fanatic, nor even does it belong to Bjork. These are some of the rumors that go along with the place, but it's actually just a lodge that was constructed back in 1953 for all the puffin hunting enthusiasts to hang out in when they weren't out doing all the bird murders. So the story may oh. not be as intriguing as the situation seems to suggest. Today, only hunting association members are actually allowed to use the lodge, and it's not available to regular old riffraff like you and I. And yeah, that was the guy from the the hotel video too. He was that was the clip he just showed. Yeah. That's crazy. What the fuck? They just have a random house on this big ass island, just chilling, yeah, yeah, yeah. shooting up birds all day. <laughs> Number eleven. Cliff Village. Oh boy. This small Another village cliff. called something I'm not about to He's attempt to pronounce is edge. located in China. The place is known as a village Damn. on a cliff, and it's easy to see why. The village itself is perched all the way up there on a 2600 oh. foot high cliff, and in recent years, thanks to the wonder of the internet, it's become something of a super Look how famous steep tourist that is, bro. attraction. Back along in the past, the village was inhabited by residents who were extremely poor and lived right on the edge of existence, to such an extent, in oh. fact, that they took their lives bro, in their hands are, whenever they scaled the side of those the Those not even traditional home. stairs, The bro. village used to be accessible only by a series of really wonky rattan ladders, and to be honest, even though improvements have been made to the ladder situation, no. this still looks the teeniest.
tiniest bit dangerous to me. In 2016, the local government invested in a bunch of money into the village, and a new steel ladder would replace the old rickety ones. That ladder? <laughs> it has 2,556 steps, nope. measuring almost two miles long. Nope. The swanky new ladder would cost almost $150,000 to build, but it is intended to make it safer for the villagers to Man. climb up and down. This is Man. now a hot spot for numpties making videos for the old social media, and the necessity for safety is paramount when these people are poking their selfie sticks all over the show. Just imagine how it must be to live in this place, though. What if you get all the way to the bottom and realize you left your wallet at home? No. I'm just going... We got to steal. Find free. <laughs> we gonna steal. We gotta we find gonna something free find to do. Things. We're gonna find something free to do. I ain't I ain't walking my ass back up two miles. Dog. I'm, I'm walking up two I'm miles steep. is dog. I'm, nah, I'm good, bro. Number 10. Drina River House. And now for a house that looks as though it may have washed up on a <laughs> so teeny, I'm tiny little island in the middle of a river. The if ever there were a storybook home then it would be this one. What? This is the Drina River House in Serbia. The story behind the creation of this unique house goes like this. Back in the summer of 1968, a group of friends had been swimming and decided to rest up on the rocky island in the middle of the river. The thing was, though, that the rocks themselves were all rather pointy and sharp and scratchy, so they decided to drag a bunch of stuff over to the rock and make it a little more comfortable. So they brought over a, a few legs right. of wood to lay on, and then assembled a few more to provide some shelter from the baking sun, and then an idea began to formulate. The following summer, a young man decided to head over to the rock and begin to build in earnest. He and a group of his friends would transport materials by kayak, and slowly but surely, the place began to take shape. Wow. The trouble was that the River Drina is wild and unpredictable, and she washed away no fewer than six houses. Each time one was washed away though, another intrepid builder would come along wow. and make a more stronger That's one. some persistent little... people, bro. When That's... niggas ain't got nothing else to do. Oh, damn, the house was washed away. Oh, Whoa. let me go build another one. Like... More power to you, man. <laughs> more power to you. <laughs> That's not... a waste. Too much free time on the hands. Little house in the middle of the river was to become famous and photographed by thousands of visitors until it became known and appreciated across the world. Number nine. Sanctuario Madonna della Corona. What? what? This remarkable Maybe place is built names, over no. 2,000 feet above sea level and into the vertical face oh, of a cliff. That's one way to ensure what? that the place is protected, I suppose. The Sanctuary of the Lady of the Crown, as it's known in Italy, is perched on Damn. such a hey, sheer cliffs, drop bro. that it almost appears to be suspended in complete midair. Although it may look like it's just hanging there, the place is actually built on a very narrow rock shelf on the Potter? side of Mount Baldo. <laughs> Yeah. It's only accessible by a very narrow path from below and a street from above. The original purpose of this extraordinary place was to be a refuge for holy men to come in order to engage in some silent reflection in a place that was completely removed from the rest of the world. Yeah. Then Clearly. in 1530, the church itself was built and eventually the site became a place to which anyone could take a pilgrimage and contemplate God in peace. The sanctuary yeah. survived throughout all the turmoil of the On 20th the century and continues to mm -hmm. this day to offer a place of quiet retreat for visitors and pilgrims alike. Number 8. Mount Fanjin. Yeah. In order to reach this place, on, any bro. intrepid visitor must climb up more than 8,000 steps. Ah, That's a long uh. way to go and peep at a temple, but it's no ordinary sort of place. Perched atop Mount Fanjing in China's southwestern right, Wuling ants. mountain range, the natural rock spire is known as the Red Cloud's Golden Peak and it supports two small Buddhist temples that have had a significant history for over 500 years. 
Can you even begin to imagine how the Buddhists ever managed to carry out all of the materials to build yeah. those original temples up that sheer edge of a mountain? Good. That actually remains a bit of a mystery to this day to everyone. Yeah, I bet it Just does. imagine carrying a regular backpack and your own body weight all the way up nah. the place. The structures have been rebuilt in more recent times with stronger materials in order to help the temples to withstand harsh conditions and strong Bro, like winds they get up there that and then go down. reality at yeah, these kind of I altitudes. Mean, these days, the I mean, that's all they can do. Get up there, take pictures. Oh my God, we made it to the top. All right, it's going to take us about another hour to get back down. Bro, pictures ain't worth it. Ain't no way in hell. <laughs> Hey, yo. 8,000 steps? 8,000 steps, bro. Dog, hell that's no. That's up there. Then you got to do 8,000 down. And then however far you park your car. Boy, <laughs> your damn feet going to be howling. How? Oh! Humming. Bro, <laughs> that shit is place is a special favorite for all of those drone camera enthusiasts oh, and for luckily sure. for us that means that we can all have a peek at this remarkable right. place yeah, without right having to bust a blood vessel lugging our soft bodies up the side of a mountain See, we can watch right here. that's a relief yep. then number seven al hajara yemen yemen this is a small town yemen. in yemen which looks unlike anywhere else in the world it's beautiful and it's ancient and it has an important place in the history of Yemen itself. The village was built in the 12th century and was to be an important fortification during the occupation of Yemen by the Ottoman Empire. The huge fortified multi-story homes were built into the mountainsides close together and with no windows in the lower parts Not of the building. Gender. All of these features would be designed. That's like a BO2 map, but it definitely remind me of a Call of Duty map. <laughs> That's funny, bro. UAV coming in, counter UAV, lot, advanced yeah. UAV coming in, <laughs> AC-130. All Dark them buildings going to take a hit. Get inside. Tactical nuke coming. <laughs> Get inside. Trying to offer the structures, along with their inhabitants, protection from invaders. The fact that this place is still standing the firm buddy, today buddy is you testament stupid. to the you strength. Right. Said it is the map. Oh, shit. You're right. <laughs> it is the map. Oh, I'm to those ancient fortifications and the principles of protection that they used when the village was first That's designed and built from the rocks hewn from the very mountains in which they still hold strong. Number six, the Meteora Monasteries. Throughout the ancient past, it does seem oh, as though monasteries are often built what's up with the most right? awkward and high up of places How? that anyone could possibly find. These monasteries in Greece, who are they well, trying to keep away from? To the rule, the Meteora monasteries were built many centuries ago on top of these gigantic rocks with epic views of the sea and landscape all around. The word Meteora means to be suspended mm. in the air, what's which there? seems Lincoln Park. What you know about that, man? What you know about mm. that? What you know about that Meteora? Meteora, man. Okay, okay. It's apt for the these extraordinary perk. places. God damn. That view there is are amazing, six though. monasteries active today and a small number of monks or nuns who live in them. The Meteora monasteries were granted UNESCO World Heritage Site status in 1988 and That's are still places that are often on top of <laughs> tourism lists to visit Before while in Fire Greece. Nation These came, man. perched holy places are also oh. having a little bit of a revival, all on the account of all the drone cameras that are flying about all over the place, and they certainly are perfect subjects for all these epic sweeping camera angles now aren't they ah, the view number five view, yeah casa do panita portugal okay now this one is perhaps huh? one of the weirdest and lumpiest sorts of homes that i've ever laid eyes on what the, the casa do panita in the north these niggas just turned the rock into a house bro they just be doing shit bro this nigga said you know what this house needs to be a fucking i mean this rock needs i can to make be a, a house out of this house. Somebody said, I can make a home out of this. <laughs> bro, they turned a regular rock into a house, bro. Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. That's definitely Flintstone vibes. <laughs> Yabba dabba doo. <laughs> Low key, we might be seeing where Fred laid his head. <laughs> North of Portugal is built between four enormous stones from the area, and although the house part of the structure was only built in 1972, the whole thing has a kind of 
prehistoric feel on the account of all the yeah. colossal rocks and organic wonky shapes of the structure in between. The building is quite rudimentary inside, although it's not uncomfortable, but there's no electricity in the place at all. The trouble yeah. with being such a strange and interesting looking building like this one is that tourists will just keep appearing to poke around, thus rendering null and void the relaxing and peaceful elements of such a retreat. People want to see what the hell going the on The owners were yeah. so frequently disturbed by such curious oh, wow. intruders that they were actually forced to move. So nowadays, Damn. the place is all about the tourism and actually contains a small museum which is full of memorabilia and photographs of all the incredible landscapes of the area through history. Unfortunately, mm. though, like many isolated places, this one has become a victim of vandalism over the years. Uh, of okay. course, bro. The final boss house. Get it? Dog, y'all niggas are the stupid. The final dog. boss house. Yeah, the it, rock. Yeah. Y'all niggas are stupid, bro. It it makes sense. It it makes sense. This is one. This is one of his many. Just one of his many. <laughs> I didn't even mean to go back all the way. The final boss and actually house. contains a small museum which is full of memorabilia oh and photographs God. of all the incredible landscapes of the area through Don't history. To take your first Unfortunately, home. though, <laughs> like many isolated places, this one has become a victim of vandalism over the years, but it has had a few upgrades in order to protect it from further damage and now features railings and even bulletproof glass what? to protect oh. it from the worst that might be thrown at it. Number four, Ponte Vecchio. Vecchio. The Ponte Vecchio in Florence, Italy, is okay. one of the most visited of tourists in the entire place. In Jinx. Italian, Ponte Vecchio simply means old bridge, and that's a basic description of the structure Whoa. itself, but it really doesn't quite do it any justice. In fact, this was the only bridge that crossed the River Arno in Florence until the year 1218. The bridge that stands Damn. in the spot now has stood there since 1345. Ooh. The original one had been washed away during a flood and then had to be rebuilt. But that 14th century bridge is still standing to this very day. There are plenty of small buildings that's on crazy, bro. Video, and that's one of the things that makes this bridge unusual. In fact, there have been shops on the bridge since the 13th century. Damn. There used to be all kinds of shops, from butchers, fishmongers, even to tanners. But in 1593, there would be a decree sent out. Damn. That's the crazy. Little fancy shop. Only goldsmith. Yeah and jewelers were to be allowed to keep their shops on the bridge. As well as being the main way to cross the river in the city of Florence, and then being the location for shops and homes, the bridge was oh, also- Yeah, yeah, nah, you gotta have money on that bridge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I see it. Look like yeah, nothing but money out there. Yeah, if they said only jewelers could be on that motherfucker, you gotta have money to walk on that. Sir, 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 sir. Sir, relax. relax. Oh, sir, what are you what are you doing here? I feel like you shouldn't be walking around these areas of these parks. <laughs> sir, 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 that's what you when you pull out. Sir, 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 what you talking about? Right. What you, what you talking about? <laughs> that's why I love these places like this overseas. Like they mm -hmm. got a lot of the old, like ancient, like buildings and bridges and stuff like that that's been up mm -hmm. for like centuries and years and years and, and years. And, and then they may have some old ways of thinking when. People like us come around. <laughs> Let them know. Hey, hey, hold on. Hold on. We're in 2024, baby. Relax. Uh, and relax and show me your finest time pieces. <laughs> By the Medici don't sell family, to your a rich and powerful dynasty oh, that ruled the city for dick. generations. Oh, the Ponte Vecchio was used Wex to Ross. build a corridor for the family Ooh. to travel between their palaces without having to walk in the dangerous streets below with the common folk and they'll never have wow. to come into contact with <laughs> any of the unwashed men below with the yeah. common folk man we don't i don't walk with these commoners uh uh peasants walk amongst you no they walk beneath me that's wild bro <laughs> This is not how I really feel, bro. I'm just playing the character. Y'all call the help, please. Nah, you, you playing that very well, bro. <laughs> Too well. No, let's not do this. People talking about this fits Ross. It don't. It don't fit me, bro. You snapped into that role like. No, no, no. I'm, it's all jokes. All right. It's all jokes. It's all jokes. Okay. 
Just jokes. Mm -hmm. There's truth in them, too. <laughs> she said, can't breathe these poor people air. Huh. <laughs> Asses. Probably for the best, really. They wouldn't have wanted to get any of those riffraff germs on their not the, persons. Not the riffraff. Number three. Matmata Tunisia. Tunisia. The other Mat worldliness of Matmata Mat troglodyte homes in the southern Tunisia is a spectacle that's unlike any other on Earth. Oh These offense. remarkable buildings are a Definitely link looking like a Call of Duty map. I'm telling you, bro. Uh, coffin team, map. Team death match. <laughs> Kill confirmed. <laughs> with the ancient past of the fascinating I North African back. country, and they're also <laughs> a massive draw for tourism to the area. Of course, these ancient homes are literally dug into the landscape in a network of centuries-old passageways and chambers, and the town of Matmata is Mata. located on the very edge of the Sahara Desert in a landscape of palm trees and olive groves, approximately 20 deep. miles to the south mm -hmm. of the nation's capital. These buildings have been inhabited by people for centuries, and are still inhabited today by many of the indigenous people of North Africa. These homes are a living, breathing preservation of the culture and and the history of these people and yeah, its region. A lot of history, this bro. region has almost no wood or stone with which to construct any kind of buildings, so the dwellings were actually dug out of the earth. An Damn. ideal way for people who live there to avoid the heat of the desert Look was to go that. underground where the temperature was regulated naturally. Each of the homes built here follows a basic construction pattern in which there's a central sunken courtyard, often with a well, and from this center, there are usually several small rooms or chambers which would be connected by passageways. The way to enter would be via a ladder or a tunnel. What do you think of these remarkable homes? Would you like to live underground like this? Let me nope. know all about it in the comments good to see. below. Yeah, good to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two, Sealand. There is an offshore platform in the North Sea that's located about seven and a half miles off the coast of Suffolk. Yeah, Back in 1967, this unusual spot would be declared to be the Principality of Sealand by a man named Patty Roy Bates. The micronation is actually not officially recognized as such, Whoa. but has, nonetheless, been occupied by the family and associates of Bates ever since. Before it became the unofficial nation of Sealand, this platform wow, was bro. built by the British during the Second World Sealand. War. Sealand? This motherfucker put money, bro. I think it just landed somewhere and claimed it. It would later then be taken over by pirate radio broadcasters, all before being seized by Bates in 1967. There was an occasion in 1978 Damn. when mercenaries invaded the micronation, but Bates was somehow able to repel the attack. This place is not officially recognized as a Somehow. sovereign state and actually sits within British territorial waters. But it all does seem rather exciting and a lot like playing forts on a really big scale, doesn't it? I can't really imagine it's a terribly practical spot for access to the shops, though, and it's probably going to be a little bit tricky to sell on the basis of its distinct lack of curb appeal. Bro, Number just literally just just... Say, you know what? I own this. This is mine. I'm gonna just stand here. So okay. yeah. Tired nothing of else to do if you want to. <laughs> right. Like there's nothing else to do. You literally just standing there. Somebody said new kid. <laughs> Why? You For wouldn't one. need to. Via Garasole. Built in the 1930s in northern Italy near Verona, the Via Girasole is a unique, if not exactly beautiful home. The concept of the design was based on the way that a sunflower, that's a girasole in Italian, moves oh. to face the sun throughout the day. The architect mm. behind the design believed that the house would maximize the potential health-giving benefits of the sun by offering the homeowners what? the opportunity to live in a building that's that rotated crazy, to follow the sun fam. itself just like a sunflower. It's a shame that it looks more like a power station than a flower, though. Right. But then again, you really can't have it all. So there you have it, a whole... <laughs> Looking like a Hydra outpost. <laughs> right. Exactly like one, right? Like What the hell? <laughs> that was crazy, bro. Niggas just got money, bro. Built to continuously follow <laughs> the sun so that way you can continue to get straight sunlight. Bro, niggas, like I said, niggas just got money. Yeah, How bro. much? How much? That's that's all they asked, bro. <laughs> I want to face the sun all day. Yep. All like, right. Building just moves. All right. Like that shit is wild, bro. Uther's outpost. <laughs> 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 
That's why he's the longest reigning intercontinental, intercontinental champion. He always in all that sunlight. Sunlight, man. <laughs> but no, but, this yeah. was very interesting, bro. Very interesting. Oh, yeah. Learned a lot, bro. Always love learning new things and new places and stuff yeah. that we never uh, heard about before, bro. So shout out to all the people that be climbing them stairs because, man, we got the drone got shots. Yep, we got y'all got it, man. We we're here to watch y'all do it. <laughs> I'm not climbing eight thousand steps just to walk around the circle. No, and I'm go good, across and go back down. Like no, I'm that's good. good. I'm but good. uh, for sure, if y'all enjoyed it, y'all know what to do. Run up the like, subscribe. Let us know what else we need to be checking out. Keep on spreading love, being love. Catch y'all later. Peace out. Already, man. This bitch is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.